Good Wednesday morning here on the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, as always, and we are shaking it up this week. Uh, yesterday, we had our Crossing All Borders segment, but today is our entertainment rundown. And the reason behind that, as mentioned yesterday, was Hanukkah is this weekend, and Friday's episode is dedicated to that Hanukkah. So with that, as always, we are proud to bring back our entertainment pundit, our entertainment reporter, the man in the States, Mr. Michael nichols Pate. Michael, thank you so much for doing this once again. Absolutely. Happy to be here. So I'm going to get this out of the way right now. I have heard you people who have listened to the show and the people who talk, uh, who send in messages to the show. I will be nice to Michael for the entire episode today. I was. I don't some, believe it. I took some flack. Let's take that. <laughs> What's the over under that we can get to the commercial break before I actually start attacking you? Um, I don't think you're going to attack me till we get into like the news port, the like what's happening portion. What's happening. Um, but we are back. We are back for another episode. Uh, I will be upfront and honest. We are recording this a week before this airs. And the reason because a uh, reason for that is twofold. One, I am preparing for my surgery on December 2nd, so I'm trying to get everything sorted out and done before I I sort of start relaxing and I go into really big treatments uh, the week after. But I I, I want to thank Michael for changing up his schedule and doing this today. So Michael, once again, thank you for doing this. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. As always. (laughs) So we are in the middle of November, almost at the end of November. Uh, let's talk about TV because that seems to be the big thing. Everything, if if anything was to come out, it has come out. What are you watching for the month of November? Oh, what haven't I watched? I finally can report back. I have seen you season three. Okay. Oh, bitch. It was everything. Miss Joe is crazy, but you know, he's kind of hot. So, and also there was a go ahead i like would let him stalk me he's very hot i'm like ready for it so for those who don't know what you're talking about you is the netflix series that pen something or other pen ben, ben badgley pen badgley he plays a stalker what? sort of yeah he's he's in he sociopath who falls in love with a woman and then kind of like stalks her and like makes himself the perfect boyfriend for her. Uh, Okay. Okay. I, 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 the only reason I know this, and this is because it's been coming up a lot over the last few days is there was a Fox news reporter in the last few days. Laura Ingram. Laura Ingram. I was going to say Laura Ingram, but it wasn't that Laura Ingram did something. And the chorus, like the, 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 the social media people went crazy saying it was comparing it to you. So did you, did you see this? Did you hear about this? Oh, I watched it and I've been watching it because the, re- the reason they called the show you is so, because one of the themes is, is he's watching these girls. So they wanted it to be whenever someone asked, Oh, what are you watching you? No, no, no. Like what are you, the show you, but she's, this should prove to everybody that she is, as dumb as a box of rocks like bitch he even said it is a television show on netflix called you they have a show called laura no bitch like i when he gave up and was like i'm done i'm like thank you and the easel storyline they were referencing was great it was probably one of my favorite moments and i agree with how it was handled and i agree with what happened to him so one of the reasons why I say that is because social media, God bless it, I, I, I'm becoming a hand talker and I should be sitting on my hands right now. But um, one of the things that I saw was the right came out and said, well, Laura Ingram was just doing the who's on first joke of Abbott and Costello. And you watched it. I didn't watch it, but I'm going to watch it after this. Well, did you get that sense that she was actually knowing what she was talking about and knowing what joke she was making or... Was it actually, she didn't know what it was ta- she, the, the person was talking about? God, the mental gymnastics people go through rather than just admit she fucked up. It's, there was no who's on first bullshit. It was she fucking either did not get it or Netflix paid her a lot of money to do that. Okay. 
And I don't think that they would have. So. Touche. So with that, what else are you watching? Because uh, I we could go into who's on first for the next 40 hours if you we want. Sure but but no. let's let's talk about what else you're watching. Um, I also watched Lock and Key season two. It was really brilliant. I'm excited for the next season. I think that they're doing a really good job with adapting the comics while at the same time keeping it original and fresh. They're doing what Walking Dead kind of failed to do. And it's really kind of cool to see it happening. Um, I also have been watching along with Doom Patrol on HBO Max, thoroughly loving that. Um, For those in Canada who are listening to this right now, we get that on Crave. We actually do get Doom Patrol, but it's on Crave. It's been great. It's been a great season. It's just a fun show. Um, I also have watched all, I finally watched Stargirl. I mean, yes, late to the party. Finally watched the second season. I really like this season. I'm really enjoying it. I think there was no filler episodes and that's why I really like it. Because it's not fantastic. It's just fun. It's candy. Who doesn't love candy? Joel McHale's in that, right? He was in the first season, correct? Yeah, he's in the second season a little more. And then the third season, he's going to be a main cast member. So he's, they're bringing him back. Because from what I remember, he he's... Okay, if I can remember back to season one, and this is a long time ago when I watched it. I think I watched it when it first came out. He's yep. her father? So we find out he's not her father. Spoiler. Okay, so that so that's where I... Yeah, but I remember him, but I was like, then he wasn't on the show for a bit because he left or died or something, and now whatever. He was supposed to be dead, and then somehow they haven't explained how he's alive. They, he shows up, they're like, you're supposed to be dead. He goes, I'll explain that later. We haven't gotten that explanation. So that'll be season three, I hope. And um, Luke Perry's in that, right? No, not Luke Perry. Who's the... Who's the... Uh, Wilson. It's um, oh, uh, Luke Wilson. No, not Patrick. Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson, yes. Oh, I knew it was a Luke. Wonderful. I love him. It was a Wilson. Okay. And then I've been watching uh, Masked Singer. I started off the Riverdale. I, I was gonna talk. I was gonna talk about that later, but let's start. Let's stick with the mass singer for two seconds. Okay. Two seconds. Because, okay. I'm so, sorry. I'm so easily excitable. So, honey boo, honey bear, honey boo boo. Oh, boo-boo. honey boo boo and Mama June. They open their mouths and they didn't. Did even you say know? Flu. And my and my husband and I were like that's honey boo boo. And then I texted with friends because I have a group of friends. We all watch together and guess. And they were like, "Oh, Michael's never gonna get this." And I literally wrote, "It's honey boo boo and Mama June." And then they're like, they like all of a sudden went silent. And I'm like, okay, I know I'm right. And then when they revealed, they're like, how did you know that? And I'm like, I'm more upset that you didn't think me and the homosexuality that I represent would not know and avidly still watch Honey Boo Boo and Mama June with Mama June from Hot to Not, Family Crisis. That's the it, current season. There's, no, there's, sorry, it's Road to, Road to Redemption now. They're still doing Honey Boo Boo shows? Yes, it's now all about mom. First, it was Mama June from Hot to Not, and it was about her journey where she was going to go from a size 25 to a size four for Sugar Bear's wedding to, to show him up, like, look at how fucking skinny and pretty I am. Um, and then it was, like, ha- Mama June from Hot to Not, like, all in the family. And then it was Mama June from Hot to Not Family Crisis, where Mama June was doing the cocaines and was not talking to the family. And now it's Mama June road to recovery they just dropped the hot to not and or not to hot and now it's just road to recovery it's brilliant i i'm like i'm i'm more offended that my friends were like oh how do you know honey boo boo like how i'm how would i how are you shocked that i know honey boo boo how do you know honey boo boo easy because i was alive when honey boo boo was like the meme of the century she drank her go-go juice and her skitty Exactly. I love Honey Boo Boo. I obsessed, was here for it. I've yet to get one wrong this year. Okay, good for you. Good for you. I will and if you- y'all want to know, I can give my predictions for who remains. Who, because I, I didn't know who the last people who were just kicked off. Like, I did not know who they were. Uh, they were some people who I just went, okay, here's some random people who I guess are kind of famous. But Well, that's the whole shtick of it. Half of them aren't famous. Um, more than half of them aren't. Let's see. Um, I, at time of watching it, I have not seen this yet. 
Uh, so um, as of watching it, Mallard still remains, Caterpillar still remains, Queen of Heart, Banana Split, Skunk, and Bull. Because yeah. I've watched last week, I've not seen this week. And then because we're filming early, I haven't seen whatever will be the following week when this airs. Um, it'll, be airing in the mor- it'll be airing in the morning, so it won't be Perfect. like, it, oh my God, I don't know what's happening. So honestly, the only one that you haven't seen is last week's episode. If for, for, those who are, for those who are watching, last week's episode is yesterday's episode, but last week's episode for you is because this is airing the Wednesday after this. Yeah. <laughs> It's complicated. (laughs) I feel like I need Doctor Who to come in here and just switch me all up. um, The bull is Todrick Hall, I'm convinced. The skunk is Faith Evans, I'm convinced. Banana Split, uh, Catherine McPhee and David Foster. The Queen of Hearts, I think, is Jewel. The Caterpillar, I think, is Bobby Burke. And the Mallard, I think, is Willie Robertson. And that's who I I think the remaining ones are. I think the Willie one probably could be right because they had the other Robertson already, right? No, I I just think all the clues are all like so Duck Dynasty and like I know, but they they've not had anyone else from Duck Dynasty on there. Okay, so I just found out live that I was correct on who the Mallard was. Um, I'm already being bullied, so it's before. <laughs> I am so sorry. I, I thought it was. I thought it was common knowledge. I haven't watched last night's yet. It literally was last night. I am so. Alrighty, so I'm I, feeling I, very attacked. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Like I said, I already thought it was that guy anyway, so it just confirmed it for me. Um, but I can tell you, it's not. Uh, no, no. No. <laughs> of who remains? It's it's not. It's not. I don't think it's Willie. Willie Robertson. I think it's Jace Robertson. Jace Robertson can't sing. Willie can't either. But <laughs> we can kind of sing. I mean, granted, the Mallard's not great. Irregardless, <laughs> that's just because you bullied me. Um, I, feel, I feel like I'm getting hate mail already sent to my inbox. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, if it's not Willie Robertson, I'm going to be genuinely shocked because Willie Robertson's the only one that's friends with Chris Pratt and they keep pushing that storyline that they're friends. So yeah. who knows? I, I will wait. I'm, I'm still sticking by Willie. And if I'm wrong, then Mass Singer is wrong. So I think you're like, you were two weeks past. Uh, oh no, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. No, I saw. I, I saw the pep. I saw the pepper get unmasked, and I saw who that was. Natasha Bedingfield, which that was one we guessed, and then who was the other one? It was Jester. Oh, Johnny Rotten. Johnny Rotten from Sex Pistols. Which yeah. I said that my husband goes, I don't know who that is, and I'm like, you don't know the Sex Pistols, and he's like, No, you do, and I'm like, I had. Yes, I, yes. I'm a gay New Yorker. <laughs> that's that's going to be my, that's going to be my answer to everything when someone asks, how do you know this? I'm gay and I'm in New York. Preach it, sister. Preach it. Um, watch last week's episode. Watch it. I apologize for I have to wait for my husband. Oh, I'm sorry. And he doesn't get home till Saturday. Well, don't listen to the last 15 minutes of this episode and then you'll be good. Trash. What else are you watching? So you were talking about the mass singer that you were about to go on another rant and then oh, Riverdale. 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 So spoiler oh. alerts for those who have not watched the last few episodes of Riverdale. It's um, only been one so far as of this airing. And actually, even when this airs, it will have been just one episode. So the question I have to ask, do you think he is? Dead? Yes. Spoiler alerts. You already (laughs) said spoiler alert, so I don't feel guilty. Um, (laughs) So uh, I screamed. Cheryl's my favorite character, and I'm live, laugh, loving that we're getting a full Cheryl, like, mini arc right now i don't think that he's dead because they keep saying this is river vale and they're doing this whole like 
this is the Twilight Zone. Like they're basically like ripping off the Twilight Zone for this. I think they wanted to do like a little because they the producers have said they wanted to do like how the CW superhero shows do the crossovers. They're like, we've been wanting to do like little mini events. And this feels like the perfect way to do that. So they're doing this like alternate universe, like timeline. I think he's really dead. I think this is just going to be, because I'm not super familiar with the newer Archie comics, just because the newer ones do bring more of that magic and Sabrina and all that kind of stuff together. I don't know if Rivervale is like an actual storyline that they're like, well, everyone's been wanting this. So let's just give them a five episode arc and call it a day. Honestly, I wish this was the real the full season like give me the full season of this I, everyone's been begging for the mysticism to actually be in riverdale give me it just hook line sinker take my money i'm so, ready for those who have listened to the I, if i'm not mistaken i think it was the september or the i think it was actually the september entertainment rundown that we talked about sabrina coming back in Sabrina made not, like it was Twitter. So I have not seen the episode. I've only seen the, uh, the semi spoilers of what's happening. But did she make an appearance? Was it the long not way? To... yet. So, okay. So she's probably going to come. She's coming. So how does, how does Archie survive? Maybe it's Sabrina. <laughs> I don't know. I think they may just kill him because like, whatever. Yeah. I think that this is just going to be, I think, we're going to kill Archie. Then the next episode, we're going to kill Jughead. And then the next episode, we're going to kill Betty. I think that they're going to kill those three off. And then the fourth episode, we're going to realize, uh oh, we done fucked up. We killed the three who can save the town. And then Sabrina is going to roll in to resurrect them. So I, I speaking of Riverdale still, uh, Mark Consuelos. Con- yes. Did I pronounce that right? I uh, believe so. He's announced that he's no longer in the show. He's Good. the part. Are you? Were you happy about that? So, for those who have never seen Riverdale, he, he plays Veronica's father, Lord, something or other, or Hiram Lodge. Hiram Lodge. Uh, it was he, time. Yeah, it was time. I mean, I think a lot of with the a lot of the adults on this show. Now that they are all adults, it's just been he's been the villain for the past like four seasons. It's just kind of gotten old. It's gotten stale, and I think that's what has drawn a lot of people away from it as he's been an antagonist of some variety. And I think for the show to grow, cut out the main villain, which is what he is. And so it gives it the opportunity to kind of grow and move forward. I don't know where the whole season's going to go. I'm just so hooked on this little five part alternate universe situation. And I kind of hope it ties to what actually happens, but I have a feeling it's just going to not. It's going to be just a sequence or a dream sequence or something. Or yeah, other. it's going to just get on my damn nerves and then it's not going to do anything. And then I'm going to hate the show again and be ready to quit it. So speaking of crossovers in the CW, we'll stick with the news here for a few seconds. So the CW realm is uh, The Flash. They are doing their first ever crossover with uh, Batwoman, with Legends of Tomorrow, uh, with the the supposedly green uh, arrow slash canaries, but this is the first time Stephen Amell is not in it because if you did not watch the season finale of Green Arrow or the series finale of Green Arrow last year, spoiler alert, he died. She did. <laughs> He's not there anymore. So this is the first time. I'm gonna say this, and I'm this is gonna be the controversial statement that that's gonna start the controversial statements. CW has jumped the shark. What gave it away? I, 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 I'm trying to stay in tune with this, but I'm so... Like, even Legends of Tomorrow, everyone's leaving. It seems like they have to come up with new superheroes every week because someone else has either left the show or pissed off the producers. So I am very... Because part of my move, Legends of Tomorrow is on, and Batwoman came back. And Supergirl was back. So I'm like so behind on all the CW shows. The Flash is the only one I've kind of kept up with. Like I'm a full season of Batwoman behind, half a season for Legends and for Supergirl. I don't mind the CW superhero shows. I just think they kind of, they, they don't need to book these like 16 to 24 episode arcs. If they just did these 13 episode arcs, like Stargirl's great. Stargirl's fun. I did not have any filler. I'm so sick of filler in TV shows. And like, 
I get that we want longer seasons. Yeah. But I just, I don't think it's doing the shows any justice. Like these superhero shows would probably be able to function a lot better. Cause many of the time, many times, and I'm not an avid comic reader and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, their battles and stuff don't translate into like multiple comics usually. And if they do, it's like one or two. Yeah. Or if it does, it, the starting of the, and this is the best thing about, and DC, I'm not a big fan of DC comics to be, to be blunt. I was more of a Marvel fan, but with DC, what they would do is they would lead up to the battle. The last page would be the, here we go panel. And then it'd be say to be continued. And then the next comic issue would be the battle. It would be the full battle. It would be eight to nine pages because that's usually how long comics are of here's the battle. Here's the winner. And then at the end, there's usually the, Oh, that was tough. And then to be continued to next week where they recap where with the CW, it seems like, Hey, we're going to do eight episodes across eight different TV shows so we can get ratings so that way you have to tune into eight different shows in the and keep crush. up with them. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's where I'm kind of at this point where I'm like, I just need to step back, which is why I like Nancy Drew. I like Star Girls <laughs> in its own universe. I don't know how they're doing that or after what happened with the Flash merging everything, but Star Girls technically in its own universe right now. So it's fun. It's easy to watch it. I, I, I really like Riverdale and like I it's it's easy because I can pick them up, watch them, set them down. And then when I have a couple saved up in my DVR, I can pick it back up and watch it and binge it. And like that's what makes those shows fun is they're very bingeable. Whereas the the superhero ones, it's becoming too much. Like it's really just becoming too much. And it's really kind of gotten to that point where I'm like, I don't have time to keep up with like 10 different TV shows just so that I can understand the crossover which is always great the crossover is always great it's just kind of like i have to keep up with these shows and half of them are boring well, granted now most of them are getting canceled so that's easier for my life but thank god pardon my french uh so before we go off on a tangent on that what else have you been watching because there's one show that i've been watching that i want to mention that i just remembered that it was starting back up so what else have you been watching um, I know I can tell you what I'm going to be starting tonight that just came out. Would the you? Tiger King season two. <laughs> I'm so ready. I need to know what that bitch Carol Baskin's on. And I need to know what she's going not on in with it. People. She's oh, not she in is. It. She is. She tried to sue them to not be in it because it's old footage. And she's like, well, I don't want that used. They're like, well, we already bought the footage. So what are you going to do about it? Uh, okay, never mind. She is in it because it's old footage that was unused because she would not sit down for this. And they're like, well, fuck it. You're still going to be in it anyway, bitch, because we got footage. True that. Obsessed. And you signed uh, and the then, contract, so. Sure did. And then Gossip Girl comes back on the 25th. Very excited. And Queer Eye comes out December 31st. The trailer for that season six just dropped today. So last week. <laughs> yeah, never, last week. So I'm so ready for queer eye and like that's everything to television that i've done all the few very few things that i so i have not been tuning into the good old tv recently i've been trying to stay away from it just because i've been trying to get everything else done but the one that i have been watching lately which a new episode drops today uh yet again i'm a big massive fan of the british comedies so i think there's a lot of people who would not be surprised but the tv show taskmaster uh they did try to do an american version of it here with reggie watts as the host it did not it flopped like there was no tomorrow um it is uh, in its 12th iteration in uh uk it is doing incredibly well i, I, I it is one of the it's it's like my thursday afternoon watch and I, I i look forward to it every day every thursday so i'm looking forward to it. season finale is not this week but next week so the first next week of this week is in is December? in the fir- first week of December. So, and then the uh, the champ this uh, season of champions comes out in December, the last week of December as well. So I'm looking forward to that. So that's gonna be fun. And the other British show that I've been watching, and I just remembered that it was picked up, is Doctor Who. 
and this is the oh, first oh, season yeah. yeah doctor who 13th season it's the last full season with jody whittaker as the fe- first female doctor um chris chernobyl chernobyl is uh taking his leave after three seasons and three more uh uh specials that are going to be airing in 2022 but i'm looking forward to it because i think jody's done an amazing job i'm looking forward to seeing what they bring uh into the fourth doctor who is going to be the newest doctor whenever they announce it in 2022 uh we should probably know by june so i'm looking forward to that but this is the first season where instead of doing 12 episodes because in britain they actually understand that people actually like shorter versions and you can actually have great content when you have shorter uh, seasons this is the first season where it's not 10 episodes it's actually six episodes and the six episodes is a full story arc it's from beginning exactly so you have to watch it and it's actually it is the first time in doctor who history where I've, i've actually gone to myself and i've gone fuck it this is actually amazing story. The writing is amazing. The like acting is subpar. Like it's perfect. And I, I highly recommend anyone who hasn't watched Doctor Who Flux, which is the name of the season, download it, borrow it from the internet. I'm not telling you to illegally download it. I'm just saying if you have a streaming service that allows you to get Doctor Who, get it because you will not be disappointed. I am still on the previous season. I got half through and I just, time ran out of me and so, so i have to finish it so i'm a couple of i'm a little behind i really do like jody and yeah. i like that they're doing the six episode arc because that's how it used to be yeah they would do like six seven episode arcs and then they'd take a month or two off and then do like a four episode story and like that's what the british the british just do tv better period <laughs> don't tell that to drag queens because then they'll come for you on twitter <laughs> Eve 6000, I'm talking to you. I was going to say the name, but I didn't know if I could. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm Eve 6000. So, well, we talked about it I'm last. so behind. I'm so behind on Drag Race 2. I just, like, can't mentally, like, function doing it. Yeah. I'm enjoying it, but I, like, I can't. I know UK is, like, crowning the winner, and, like, it's just... It's just like by the time this airs, the UK uh, crown winner will be of crowned, and the Canadian one will be failing miserably. So here we go. If it's not L of a day, I don't want it. Yeah, that's who we're at right now, too. And we're like, okay, if it's not L of a day, then yet again, or I like Kitty Scott, I just don't like charity. Or, uh, no, what's her name? Versace. Crystal Versace. Yeah, Crystal. Uh, Which I'm not sure if you watched last episode, but uh, we had the come to Jesus moment where we all talked about, they all talked about their sexual habits and she came out as a virgin. (laughs) Nope. Can't touch that one. Anyways, let's continue. Let's continue. So before we move on to movies, there are a few trailers that drop for some TV shows that are coming out soon. And I want to talk about them big because this one I'm actually really looking forward to because there's already controversy around it because the lead, the the person the show is based on is already saying, that's a that's like a freaking makeshift China version of uh, who I'm supposed to be. Oh yeah, she went on point. So the show, Pamela and Tommy, it is a Hulu show that is going to be airing here shortly. I think it's actually in December, where it is the story behind the leaking of Tommy and Pamela's sex tape about how it was uh, got, how it happened. Uh, Sebastian Stan is the Tommy Lee Jones, and I don't remember her name, but the woman who's playing Pamela is not... And I, it, I, I mean this with all sincerity, not as endowed as Pamela Anderson. Well, so, no one is. Exactly. So Pamela today, uh, last week, uh, said to some media people that it was basically a makeshift uh, version of who she was. It's not anything. She doesn't look like her. It's bad. And I was like, whoa, Pamela's gone crazy. I am Come on, Pamela. So this has Seth Rogen. This has Nick Offerman. No. This has <laughs> this has Sebastian. What? <laughs> no, he's so hot. No, I'm just gonna. I'm just, I just. I need to know who this person is. 
Read me some more men. Lily James is Pamela Anderson. What do I know her from? She is a singer, British singer. Oh. Lily James? Lily James, I think so. No, oh. she's not. I thought she was. Cinderella. Or maybe she is. Cinderella. She was in Cinderella. Oh, was she Cinderella? She was. <laughs> oh, bless her. Okay, I do know Miss Lily James. So Lily James is the... It, it, it is who it is. I just want to look nothing like Pamela. I'm with Pamela. I'm still yeah. gonna watch it because drama and Pamela, but so that is what I'm looking forward to for uh move uh TV shows, but also the one that I just came out earlier this month. I watched a bit of it, I turned it off because I got really sick and tired of it in about 20 minutes after it started airing. Is Adele's 30 on CBS? Oh, uh, I haven't seen it. She she sang in front of the, I want to say San Francisco Observatory or LA Observatory, the big white building in LA. The Griffith Park Observatory. Sure. I'm Canadian. I don't know these things. <laughs> so she sang in front of there, in, sure. in, in, in front of the sold out crowd. Uh, she sang her hits. She sang some of her new songs. I didn't like it. I, 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 I think again. Well, I think like the, we've established like the, that you hate Adele. Oh, I don't hate Adele. I just think you she's hate just, Adele. I just think she breaks up with her boyfriends for album sales. <laughs> Every musician does that. Man, women, all of them. John Mayer does it too. Yeah, but John Mayer is more than a woman. <laughs> more of a woman than a woman. <laughs> yeah, I went there. I went there. No, I need you to like superimpose math girl on me because I don't know what you just, I don't know what any of that. So just impose like math symbols, like the math girl meme, because I'm just like. Exactly. So that is the T. So we are, we are done with the movie, uh, TV shows. Oh, well, actually, it's not, not really, because there's one that we still haven't talked about. And that's the HBO special that is coming out because it is HBO and therefore it's a TV show. <laughs> The Harry Potter reunion. I'm very shook by this. The, I didn't know we needed a reunion. I think they're just jumping on this bandwagon of we need a reunion for everything. I mean, Broadway's doing it too. I'm, I'll probably watch it because I just want to know what Rupert Grint has been doing. But he's been which doing I think something. it's I think it's buying an ice cream truck and giving out ice cream to children is what he's been doing. No, he did. That was what he wanted to do. He bought an ice cream truck and he just gives out free ice cream to children. I'm, I'm shook. I'm shook. You didn't know. I thought every, I thought this was, I thought this was common knowledge. I love that. No. I just shared this with you. <laughs> no. Um, wow. <laughs> it's literally like what his dream was. And like, now he's kind of doing acting again, but like, that's what he did for a while after Harry Potter. Eh, good for him. Take some time off. <laughs> Give out ice cream to kids. Watch uh, children in nature. So all the alive actors, and I, I say that sincerely, all most of the alive actors, because I'm not sure if every single one of them is going to be called back and interviewed for this, but uh, the actors will be back and talking about 20 years since the first Harry Potter movie came out. And all I don't want to hear that. Why not? 20 years? <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Do you feel old? Make me feel old. Okay. Well, and the, I've been seeing that 20 years since the first uh, Lord of the Rings movie came out, and that's also making me feel old because I remember watching that and I hate myself right now. 25 years since Titanic. Nah, that doesn't bother me as much. Bothers me. <laughs> I know. It really bothers me. Um, the one that I'm surprised that is not invited to this reunion show is the author of the re the author of the Harry Potter series, Miss Go Kay. by. Nobody need her. Nobody need her. Without her, <laughs> they wouldn't be there. Um, those books were written by God. Nobody knows who the author was. They were just plopped down one day, and that's how I'm going to remember that. You you sound like oh my god! I was going to make a bad joke, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to rein it in. Also. I don't know why J.K. Rowling's so worried about people in the bathroom 
and trans people in the bathroom when she had a cis white boy in the women's room for half of the damn fucking book, all of the book. He spent mo more time in that girl's bathroom in that second book. Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets. Mm. The Chamber of Secrets was in the women's bathroom on the mo second floor. Yeah, moaning Myrtle. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm mm -mm. Miss 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 Joan. Uh -uh, I'm not here for her right now. So that is our TV recap of what is there, what is coming up. You're probably going to see a lot more shows uh, do their winter finale here in the next few weeks. Um, but uh, December is usually a time when all the TV channels decide, hey, let's make some money by putting Christmas 24-7, seven days a week, 365, well, 31 days out of the year. <laughs> so, And you're complaining? Oh, I'm not. You know how I was, much I was gonna you say know, you, you know are much, complaining about that. You know how I'm much like you've Hallmark been watching Channel? Hallmark since October. Yes, but it doesn't mean anything until November first, <laughs> and then it really doesn't mean anything until December first, and then it really doesn't mean anything until the Monday before Christmas. <laughs> <Model. laughs> Boom! Let's talk. T let's talk movies. Let's talk <laughs> movies. Uh, as uh, Michael has alluded, he has been busy over the last month, so he probably hasn't seen a lot of movies. And with him, I'm gonna be his... real. You gonna be real? I've not watched a damn movie. I've not had time. I've been in a play. I've been in the Diary of Anne Frank, and I have been busy. And I finally done. So I have a whole list of movies to watch. So what's on? What's on the? Movies. What's on the movie list? I'm just gonna go. Um, Encanto. I want to see House of Gucci. I still haven't seen Shang Chi, and I want to watch that. I do want to see the new Ghostbusters. I want to see the new Christmas movie, Single All the Way. Um, I want to see Tick Tick Boom. I want to see Spencer. I want to see Clifford, and I think that's everything that will be out or is out that came out in November. Uh, what I have is I want to see Eternals. I want to. Oh, see I do want to see that. I want to see, but. From the reviews that I've been reading and seeing, I'm not sure if I want to see it in the theaters or if I'm going to wait till it comes out on Disney Plus, because I am scared. Scared. Why scared? Because a lot of people I haven't read are, anything. A lot of people are like saying it jumped the shark, and a lot of people don't like it. Oh, I've had everyone's loved it, but it's also we have to remember it's Chloe Zhao who yeah. directed Nomadland. And so even from the trailers, I'm like, this is barely a Marvel movie because they've got like the sweeping scenery shots. I'm like Marvel doesn't do that. It's very artsy from what the trailer yeah. made it seem. And I'm sure that turned off a lot of people who aren't wanting to watch an artsy Marvel movie. They want to watch a bunch of people beat each other up, which That's same. Cool. Which is Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi. And I will be honest, Canadian boy represent. Uh, I know we talked about him last last time, and I got myself into some hot trouble. So that's why I, I, uh, I, I will say this kindly. I like the movie. I, I, I watch it. You will love it. I think it's one of those like it's a true Marvel movie. It's an action packed movie, and uh, his sidekick I forget her name right now. Aquafina. Aquafina. Best part of the movie. Best part of the movie. Imagine. You imagine there's a dragon thousands of years old and it wakes up and it has the voice of Aquafina. That is the plot of Raya the Last Dragon. Oh, really? I love Aqua, I love Aquafina, but when that dragon wakes, it's like, oof, imagine. Like, <laughs> this is the one thing that's going to save it. And it has the voice and mannerisms of Aquafina. Molly, you in danger, girl. Okay. Uh, Spencer. I do love Aquafina. I want to see <gasps> Very that. Very excited. It's out. Do you? I, I do, actually. Oh, we didn't even talk about that whole issue, but I'm just going to leave that for another day. Another day. Another day. You don't, get, you don't get to be a royal and then go on Ellen DeGeneres. Looking at you, Meghan Markle. You leave my girl alone. Yeah, I will. <laughs> no, you won't. Nope. I'm being uh, bullied. No. Take no. to Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter said thoughts and prayers to Michael Nichols Fade. I'm not on Twitter, so that's true. Uh, send it to his thoughts and prayers to his Instagram account, which will be linked in the show notes. Uh, Clifford the Big Red Dog. I have I been, 
a lot of positive things about this, which I thought it was going to be a terrible movie, but I've been hearing a lot of positive things. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. It was supposed to come out on Paramount Plus, but let's just not talk about Paramount Plus because we all remember the the great the great fight of my life in October's entertainment rundown. Uh, the other two that I want to see that have come out as of this recording is The Power of Dog with Benedict Cumberbatch and Ghostbusters Afterlife. So those are the movies that I want to see, that I still have to see, that I'm still trying to try to figure out time that I can do that. I'm going to have a lot of time after December 2nd where I'm going to be basically laid up in bed. So I'll be watching a lot of movies. So our January entertainment rundown is going to be crazy. Well, it's also going to be right before the Oscars too. So we're going to have to do like... We're going to have the nominations for the Golden Globes. We're going to have yeah. the nominations for the Oscars probably come out uh, two weeks after. Mm. So Golden that Globes. That might be February. Golden the Globes Oscars come ones. out in January, right? But Golden Globes for sure. So we might have to, we might be coming back for a Golden Globes enter, uh, live sh- episode after that. Uh, but let's talk about Oscar season since we're talking about Oscar season. December is usually known in Hollywood as, as Oscar season. You do not release a movie in January to get it nominated for an Oscar. Highly unlikely. I think the last time it happened was as good as it gets in 1997. Let's just put that out there. Well, January movies don't get released much anyways. It's things that are like, this is probably going to flop. So we're just going to put it here because it'll be the only thing there. So maybe it'll make money. That's exactly. how um, that Keanu Reeves replicas movie was released in January. Yeah. So trash. there is a lot that is going to be released in theaters and on Netflix because you can already tell that they're getting ready because all the trailers, if you're watching TV recently, is released in theaters and limited uh, limited theaters and on Netflix because they have to hit a quota to be considered for best picture. So you're going to see a lot of that. Two weeks in specific theaters to qualify for the Oscars. There you go. Our and I only know this because The Room, Tommy Wiseau's The Room, he wanted it to be potentially oscar worthy he thought it was oscar worthy and he thought so he like fully went and like made sure to do all the requirements so he could literally submit it and it's t- one of the worst movies ever made but i only know it because of that and doing research into that movie because i loved really bad movies never seen it in my life i refuse to see it <laughs> it's on youtube for free yeah i'm okay i still haven't seen avatar i put them in the same category avatar like the blue people yeah Oh, you're going to have to watch it when the sick sequel comes out and they turn it into a whole like universe. Yeah, I'm not going to see the sequel either. Did you watch Pocahontas? I watched Fern Gully. It's the same thing. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say, did you watch Pocahontas? Did you watch Fern Gully? It's both of them. Yeah. So I'm going to say, yeah, no. But talking about movies that are coming out that are going to be up for Oscar contention for sure. <laughs> West Side Story, Steven Spielberg's rendition of West Side Story already getting some uh, attacks, but Can I tell a whimsical little anecdote? It is your, it is, this is part of your show, so you go right ahead Michael. So my husband the very first time he saw West Side Story, at the end spoiler alert, if you've never seen West Side Story or you don't know anything about it, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on if you have not seen West Side Story, if you've not heard about West Side Story, I'm going to I'm gonna offer one quick book you should read. Romeo and fucking Juliet. Continue on. Okay. So, <laughs> at the end, when Tony dies, this, he saw a production, yeah, he saw a production. This is in Alabama. The guy walked off the front of the stage, knocked himself out, and Juliet jumped into the orchestra pit, fished him up, threw him on stage. He's lying there limp, Chino comes out and shoots her in the back of the head. And so he thought that that was West Side Story and how it ended. It doesn't end that way. Chino shoots Tony and then Maria lives. He saw a second production of it and they had the real ending. And he's like, that's dumb. Why'd they change the ending? And his mother was like, no, that's supposed to be how it ends. He's like, no, the production I saw, they did this. And she's like, yes, someone fucked up. 
And so he hates West Side Story because he doesn't think it's enough like Romeo and Juliet. And he likes the version he saw where everybody died. I'm kind of here for it. I'm, it's sorry, I just needed to tell a whimsical little anecdote about my husband. There you go. Um, Don't Look Up, Meryl Streep, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Adam Scott is the director. It is the Adam Scott version of whatever the hell he thinks the 2012 disaster movies uh, pandemic was, but it's just a complete clusterfuck. I, I, I might watch it because I'm a big fan of... Uh, um Meryl Streep a bit so she might get nominated ah she'll probably might she will get <laughs> might she's best, going to best supporting actress we're putting it out there right now she is going to be she's not going to win she don't get nominated but she won't win <laughs> just like Leonardo's going to get nominated he ain't and gonna win. uh Jennifer Lawrence is going to get nominated. she might win miss Jennifer usually wins when she's nominated yeah I, uh, we'll, we'll talk we're gonna have that. to jump over that hula hoop later <laughs> yeah we're gonna have to jump over that one in a few seconds uh being the ricardos i think this is going to be a serious contender javier Bardem, Nic- uh, nicole kidman this is the story about lucille ball and uh ricardo oh my god i forget his last i guess I forget his first name. Okay, but it's about Lucille Ball and her husband and the creation of the studio and the Lucille Ball show. So uh, there was a big, big hubbub when this was first announced because Deborah Messing was not the actress who was supposed to get that role no matter what, and Nicole Kidman got it. So Deborah Messing was very pissed off. But I'm actually thinking Nicole's going to do a good job. There's my... There's my I mean... I'm going to hold my judgment till I've seen it. I don't really like Nicole Kidman as an actress, but I'm going to hold judgment. I also don't think Deborah Messing can do serious very well. And the last time, uh, last time uh, Nicole Kidman did a, sh- a movie about a remake of a TV show, it did not go well. <laughs> Bewitched. <laughs> she's anyways i just am not a big nicole kidman fan i know that's like blasphemous or whatever but like meh. oh well uh, uh the highly highly anticipated i think marvel and sonia sony's feud is making this one of the most must-see movies of 2021 if not the last 10 years is spider-man no way home okay thoughts let, okay. I, <laughs> Go I riot if they kill Zendaya because they showed that moment in the trailer where homegirl's falling. If they kill Zendaya, I will never watch another Marvel movie. Period. Never. Zendaya, I, I literally would die for Zendaya. <laughs> Therefore, if they kill her in this movie, they don't get to, they don't get my money. They don't get my viewership. I say that now, but I have, yeah. we'll see if my mouth is where my thoughts are mad also are they really trying to convince us that toby mcguire and andrew uh, garfield andrew garfield are not going to be in it when they literally are taking their villains and putting them into this directly from those universes yeah yeah but again this is the hype that marvel is so good at right marvel is so good at showing you shit and then you go into the movie and nothing you've seen is in the movie. And this is the part of the Marvel and Sony gamble that I think is going to pay off dividends. I think this is going to be, this is going to probably beat Avengers Endgame in sales. People, oh, agreed, because everyone's ready for it. Exactly. And people are looking for it for that one shot. And I know there's been leaks online about, if Andrew and Toby are in it and there's been leaks of who, what villains are in it and what actually is going to happen. They're well, agreed. They've shown all the villains. Okay. They've shown five of them. There's still allegedly one missing if they are in fact doing the sinister six. Cause the trailer, the trailer showed five. Did the trailer show six and I'm just blind. I'm just going to continue on. 
I yeah. We will take a break here in a few minutes and we'll chat about it. But um, I think this is this is going to be my part. This is going to be the movie where people go, okay, uh, what the hell is Spider-Man's name? Peter Parker? No, his actual name. Tom Holland. Tom Holland becomes the new Robert Downey Jr. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Do not, do like the know. leader of the Avengers? The leader of the Avengers, the leader of... because. Marvel wants Benedict Cumberbatch to be that leader, that the the sort of the new go-to guy where Robert Downey Jr. was at the first few movies. I think it's going to be Tom Holland. I think Tom Holland has a career making Spider-Man movies for the rest of his life if he wants to. And he says he wants to. Like uh, Chris Hemsworth wants to do Thor for the, as long as they keep on writing for him, he'll keep on doing them. So I think Tom Holland has basically become Spider-Man. When people think, because my generation thinks to- Tobey Maguire is Spider-Man because he was the original one. So That's Spider-Man. Period. Exactly. I think this one is going to change that though. Well, I, I think Tobey Maguire was the best Peter Parker. Andrew yes. Garfield was the best Spider-Man. And Tom Holland is a really good both. Like he, yeah. he's not the best Peter Parker because Tobey is better. He's not the best Spider-Man because Andrew Garfield is better, but he's so good at both. He's the he's honestly the best pick for that right now, especially right now, because he has the best part. He is good with both sides of it, whereas there was a lacking on Toby's and there was a lacking in Andrew's. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to this like there's no tomorrow. I, I I have not gone to a theater in a very long time, but this might be the first movie where I might actually... Same. Might have to actually go to my Jewish husband and say, hey, let's celebrate Christmas as the Jewish people we are at a movie theater. I love and, it. And then go to Chinese food right afterwards. I love it. Exactly. So that is that is that is my prediction. I think it's going to be possibly nominated for a lot of Oscars in the visual effects categories. So Okay, yes. So, I'm like Oscars for acting? No. No, there's like three that have ever been nominated for acting for a superhero movie and let's be honest, none of them should have won. One or even been nominated. One and or I don't think even. they won. Who won? Heath Ledger. I went there. Keith Leather should I get again. I just didn't like his rendition of Joker. I and then uh what's his name? What's his name? Other Joker guy. The the last Joker. Joaquin? Yeah, him. I'm triggered. He shouldn't have won either. Apparently, I like, if you play the Joker, you win an Oscar. Yeah, well, no, not unless you're Jack Nicholson, who was the best Joker, who was the greatest Joker of all times. I need to go. Well, we're about to take a break here for two seconds, but we have a few more movies before we talk about the big one because we're on the other side of the commercial. We're going to battle it out over the biggest news movie news story of the probably the last two weeks. But uh, The Matrix Resurrection is coming back. Uh, I sure okay. We're bringing Neil Patrick Harris into the Matrix fold. We're bringing Jonathan Groff into the Matrix fold. Understandable. You do what you have to do. Lawrence Fishburne doesn't look you like candor either. to the gaze. Exactly. <laughs> Leather in the gaze. I just uh, I don't understand it. So good for them. The uh, Wasnowski sisters are directing this. So they directed Wachowski. The uh, sure. Uh, the other movie that I'm looking forward to because I like the first two uh, movies is The Kingsman, The King's Man, sorry, which is the prequel but third one in the trilogy of The Kingsman with uh, Colin Firth and other guy who I can't remember his Taron name. Taron Egerton? Yeah, guy who played Elton John. <laughs> Taron! Yeah, sure. Uh, and then American Underdog. Uh, the This is a movie I, I was really excited about when it was first announced 
And then they cast Zachary Levi as the main character. And it went downhill from there because I'm not a Zachary Levi fan. I think he did okay in Shazam, but it wasn't like, oh my God, he's Shazam. What? Did you just, did I lose you? Oh, no, there you go. You you had that look on your face of, mm, what, what what's up? Paused. What happened? Why you don't, oh, you don't my, like- my computer full paused. Like, I have not seen a single thing that you said, or I, it just paused on me. It's fine. Okay, my internet connection is unstable, it says, so it's probably my side. <laughs> so I'm going to say this again. Zachary Levi, I just, I'm not a big fan of Zachary Levi. I don't think he's a good actor. I think he's a one hit wonder. He did some good things probably a few years ago, but not a big fan. So for those who don't know what an American underdog story is, is in the NFL a few years ago, I don't remember what team it is and I should know. They had an open call for tryouts and this grocery store clerk went and did a tryout and he became part of the team and literally that is the story you also forgot two potential oscar contenders i'm not done my list yet oh oh sorry i thought you were done i was so bored by zachary levi's entire okay. story but, but <laughs> let's, 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 okay. i just wanted to move past it i i will let you talk then what are the two movies that i forgot Nightmare Alley. Okay. Which I don't know what that is. And that's. the Venus and Serena movie that Will Smith's doing. King Richards? Yes. You think he's going to be nominated? No, I think those girls are going to be nominated. For supporting actress? Mm-hmm. And then Meryl I think one Strip of them will. <laughs> uh, no, they don't give awards to children. They just nominate them. I know, but... If they do nominate the two girls at the same time, they'll split the vote because there'll be some people who vote for them and then Meryl Streep will walk up the middle. And then Frances McDormand will win and will be triggered. Yes, the tragedy of Macbeth, which is with Denzel Washington and uh, Frances McDormand. They are, they, they have made the announcement. They have predicted that this movie will be the first time where Fran, uh, an actress or actor gets nominated for Best Picture and Best Actress back-to-back with potential of winning both back-to-back. So Interesting. Exactly. So I would be, this is the one, this is the dark horse in the race that I think is going to be the one that you're going to have to watch out for. So any other movies that you're looking forward to in 2000, uh, in December before we take a quick break here? No. Okay, so everyone will be back in about 45 seconds. I just have to do a quick, uh, uh, do quick something quick and then we'll be right back. So talk to you soon. <coughs> okay. Okay, so um, dude, do you not know the spoiler? Isn't it the Sinister Six and it's Mysterio, right? No. Have you not seen Venom 2 yet? No. Oh, okay. It's Venom? It's Venom. Really? The the post credit scene in Venom 2, Venom tells Tom Hardy's character, Eddie Brock, hey, I have the ability to transport between universes because that's a thing now. And he takes himself and he puts himself in the moment when J.J. Johansson, J.K. Simons, is announcing on the Daily Bugle's website, he's in New York, he's Venom, and it says, breaking news, uh, Spider-Man has been identified and has killed Mysterio. So there is a large speculation that Venom is the sixth person and the Sinister Six will be formed in the movie. Because I know Sandman, because we saw Sandman, we saw Electro, we saw Doc Ock, we saw Lizard, and we saw green goblin and i know that there was a six and all the lego sets right now have mysterio yeah with those five so i don't know if it's going to be mysterio or venom but i have heard venom and i didn't know where that came from and now i do (laughs) 
Journalism is in crisis, and our mission here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast is to tell the story that isn't being told. It is vital that independent journalism survives with the rise of fake news. Every penny that is contributed to the Cross Border Interview Podcast goes to help continue our work to tell people's stories. All of our content is produced and edited by our team. The Cross Border Interview Podcast provides entirely free content, and we will never hide stories behind paywalls. By supporting a new model of journalism, our listeners, like you, are supporting real, independent journalism. Consider making a monthly donation via our Patreon account, or make a one-time donation by Interact eTransfer. Now, let's get back to the show <laughs> that was a great commercial and i could it not was agree, so great could not agree more if you want to do if you do want to give us a, a follow on patreon and donate to the show we would highly recommend like the commercial said go to patreon.com backslash cross border interviews uh we have memberships there and you can just check it out and just three four or five dollars a month it does help us continue the show so head on over to patreon like the commercial said <laughs> there's my second plug of the plug so <laughs> we are back and we are we are ba- we are segueing into a wicked time because this is going to be either a debate or one of the, the biggest if not craziest 20 minutes of one topic we've ever had on this show because there's a lot that I need to d- unpack on this. Wicked. Wicked the musical is coming to the th- big screen. I'm not going to lie. We love Cynthia Erivo and Alphaba. She's going to be brilliant. She could be. I, I could not agree more. She, I just... With what she did for the color purple, she can sing, and and that's what I need from. She Alpha will Buck. hit defying gravity hard. Yeah, and, and you, er- you er- yeah. Er- so, and that's so for anyone who's listened to the show, you know that the name Ariana Grande in the Nichols Pate household is not the best name. So I, I have to ask the question: When you heard Ariana Grande's name as a uh, Oh my God, I can't pronounce, I can't even remember her name right now. Glinda. Glinda, the good witch. What was your, what was the, what was the, what was the reaction in the Nichols Pate? I didn't hear a big scream from New York, so I I could imagine it was pretty tame. My husband goes, oh, I'm not watching that movie. And I'm like, (laughs) you're not going to watch Cynthia Erivo. He goes, can I skip every single time Ariana opens her mouth? And I said, no. Um, I mean, I just, I don't know if she's the right pick. She's a big name. And I think they may have gone with her because they wanted to go with Cynthia and Cynthia is not considered a big name. I I, just, I don't know. I'm not here for it, but it's, it's, I'm going to try and withhold judgment to like physically see it, but who knows? So I am a social media person. I am on social media on a regular basis due to, due to the job and just have to keep up in tune of what people are talking about. The, the social media realm went crazy after the announcement of Ariana Grande as Glinda the Good Witch. People were making fun of a certain actress who was up for the role as Glinda the Good Witch as well. Do you know who I'm talking about? I believe she once said she wanted to shit in the wig of one of her cast members on the hit Ryan Murphy television program, Glee. I I, I think you are talking about the same person that I am. I I am. It's Leah Michelle. I think her name is Leah Michelle. And you would be right. The attacks that she got after that announcement, it wasn't about the the two people who have just been cast. Literally, the news is, ha ha, Leah, you didn't get it. (laughs) Well, that was the attacks after Beanie Feldstein got um, announced as Fanny Bryce in Funny Girl on Broadway. 
people literally were like Leah Michelle right now. And now the meme is Leah Michelle after she found out she's not funny girl and she's not Glinda. And it's that, um, did you see Mean Girls? Yeah. It's when Regina George like finds out the, the cow team bars are fat bars and she's gained weight and she comes back into the room screaming. I literally watched that screaming and like, don't trust her. She's a fugly slut. And it then slapped it down and it was Ariana Grande and um, Beanie Feldstein. And I was screaming. Before we talk a little bit more, I, I got to ask the question. Is, mm, is Leah Michelle canceled? I feel like she's been canceled and people are, I just, I don't, mm, is she the reason, was. The reason I ask is because she's in a new movie. She is? Yes. Her, Jonathan Groff, uh, Skylar Astin are coming. Oh, they're in the uh, Spring Awakening reunion. No, they're doing the movie Spring Awakening. Oh, they're doing the movie with them? Yeah. The original cast? From what I understand, from what I saw in Skylar Astin. Interesting. Um, she is canceled, question mark. I mean, she was canceled when um, all that stuff came out when her co-star was like, oh, so you say Black Lives Matter, but you literally tried to shit in my wig and like made my life hell. Um, so she's kind of one of those people that like disappeared and then now is just going to reappear and act like the cancellation never happened. Like Kevin Spacey? And Spacing? it's probably going to, uh, a little bit. I, I think she's going to get away with it too. Because she is talented and that's where it's like... <sighs> And it's like, she said the right things and she did the right things. And so she's going to get away with it without actually really addressing anything. I don't know. I don't know. She's uh, kind of always been a bitch and everyone knows she's a bitch. And I just, I think it's just kind of reached that point where we'll see if Spring Awakening gets really supported or not. And that'll probably decide if she is in fact canceled or not. That's true. I, I, I just, I... I I, I don't know much about her and I only I only know what I see on social media and I read the the, the news headlines, which we can all tell are totally true 24 7 seven days a week. I I hope for the best. I hope for the best because I I I'm not sure where I stand on canceled culture because some people do need to be canceled and like Kevin Spacey. Uh, I think there's a lot of people who just jump to the conclusion that you have to be canceled if you do something wrong, but we will leave yet again, and you know where I'm going with this. Um, there's a lot of people like a certain personality called RuPaul, who has said things, who does things, and seems to get a pass. So I just don't know where the line is, and I just, I, I, I wish there was like a, there was a handbook where someone could give it to me and say, here's the rules of how to be canceled. So that way I would know who I need to cancel and who I don't need to cancel. Until that moment where that book comes out, I, I, I don't understand it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I've never, I mean, she's talented. I'm not going to, I can't, I can't lie. Mia Michelle is talented. Oh, I love she's her. Like her one insane. album that she did is great. She is insanely talented. She's just miserable to work with. And that's what everyone who's ever worked with her has come out and said, other than like, like Jonathan Groff. And it's because he's best friends with her. They're like this. They really are. Would, I mean, and I also like, sh with everything that happened with Corey, I think people are more willing to forgive because of that being so traumatic. But it's like, y'all, she, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a really a well-formed opinion on Leah Michelle. I like to pretend she doesn't exist. Let's continue doing that because Glee. she's she's no longer Glinda. Um, but let's go back to Wicket for a second. Because after the Leah Michelle die down, <laughs> the the new target on everyone's back was uh, the new target was. Uh, TV personality, late night talk show host, Mr. Musical, every goddamn musical that has been produced in the last five years, Mr. James Corden became the target of everyone's ire. Not just him. Like, yes, him the loudest, 
But now they're going after Lynn manuel Miranda, which I'm over here like, yes, finally, because I've never liked him. And Billy Porter. I'm like, what the fuck did Billy Porter do to y'all? They're hating on Miss Billy Porter. They're what? hating on Miss Lynn manuel Miranda and Miss James Corden. Okay, so let's, 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 because I only know James Corden, so I'll let you talk about Lynn manuel Mel, Miranda. Yeah. And Billy name. Porter. <laughs> So let's talk about James Corden right now. James Corden has ba- basically become the staple of every musical in Hollywood over the last, I would say, 10 years since he's moved to Hollywood. Since he basically became a Tony guy, he became the musical chubby British guy that everyone will call to and get you at least some money made. This backlash is something I've never seen. Because people came out in force against him. They were saying, don't don't hire him. Don't cast him in. There was a petition going around. Like CNN picked it up. A lot of people picked it up. I was shocked. I know I, I'm not a big fan of James Corden, but I didn't think that there was a lot of people out there who thought the same as me on this. What about yourself? I th- think the big because I really like James Corden I used to really really like him and want work for him I think it's just gotten to the point where every single movie musical now has him in it and I know myself and others are sitting there thinking there's so many talented people on Broadway that would love the chance to be a random side character that Jay that James Corden's gonna be like James Corden's never the lead other than when he did Into the Woods which I did not hate his casting which is I think that was the first one he did in the states when they were like oh wait he's easy to work with He's super talented. Let's cast him in everything. I, I wish, I just wish they would give more thought to who they cast and give more opportunities, especially in movie musicals, because their people are going to support them. Grab people from Broadway who are more talented or who've never had a shot to give them that shot. And there are other British people out there, Hollywood. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I hate, I hate to say that, but if you're looking for a British singer, you do realize you can go across the pond and actually talk to England and be like, hey, what London uh, Broadway show is being released? And let's see if we can find a good singer. There's some. Yeah. Out there. I just, I, I'm kind of over, I'm just kind of overseeing him and things because he's so oversaturated. And I think that's where people are really like so turned off from it is because of how oversaturated he is. Do you think he's going to get cast? (sighs) You do, don't you? I do. I think they're waiting to give the rest of the cast because they want this to die down rather than amplify because I think he's already been cast because I think he's producing it. And as we talk, it's only about, happening because of his money. Yeah, and as we talked about in the last episode, last few episodes, where James Corden puts his money, there's usually a writer that says, "I'll give you money. I'm just not fucking letting you go without putting me in it." Hence, why prom was made. No, prom was made because Ryan Murphy wanted to do that movie. I really liked the musical. I know the movie got a lot of shit. I didn't hate the movie. I just, the one thing that I think was really disappointing is they made the entire original cast audition, like not like optional, like we want, we're like led them on to think like we're going to cast you all and then didn't. And I think that's where they really fucked up with the prom. Yeah. Um, The other two that you mentioned was Lin-Manuel Miranda. Why is he getting canceled? I I don't know about canceled, but people are like, keep Lin-Manuel Miranda, Billy Porter and James Corden away from this. And I'm like, Okay, I don't like Lin Manuel Miranda. I think he's not very talented, but I think other people are now starting to realize he's not very talented, but he's another Hollywood darling when movie musicals happen. He gets cast a lot, or right, he's a great writer, period. Keep him as that. And then Billy Porter now, all of a sudden, people are like, no, keep him away. And I don't know if this is a direct backlash to him being in that horrible Cinderella that was on Amazon Prime. Or if it's just because people are like, give others a chance. And like, I'm with that. But like also Billy Porter has not been in like crazy numbers of things. He really doesn't do a lot. does not get cast a lot outside of Broadway 
other than the TV show Pose, maybe because of that, people see that he is going to go the way of James Corden. And so they're trying to curb it. But I don't, I mean, J- Billy Porter's talented. Very, very talented. Like insanely talented. <coughs> I don't know. I just, I don't understand why we're now hating on Billy. Like the rest of the other two, I don't care. But like this one is the one where I'm like, why are we hating on him? He's so good. Because we all love each other. And at the end no, of the we day, don't. we got to have people to hate. <laughs> we got to have people. I guess. To hate. Um, so we are actually I was surprised so I thought that was going to be a little bit more of a contentious but I think we both agree that maybe yeah. James Corden needs to maybe maybe just producing a musical from time to time is what James Corden needs to do maybe yeah. just take this one off and find a way to get into Spring Awakenings <laughs> like there's no probably, there's no role for him in there eh, they'll find one for him <laughs> no there's literally no role for him in that okay to each their own <laughs> Um, but on the topic of music still, because this is how we segue in this show, let's talk about music. Music over the last 30 days has been, uh, I would say, heartbreaking. Because 30, uh, 30 days? 30? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you set yourself up. You I set did. yourself up. The last 30 days have been pain. Because the whole month of November so far has been about our idol, our queen, the queen that is not Queen B, Miss Adele. That's not where I thought she was going with that, but I'm ready. I listened to her new song. Literally, I, I literally texted Michael while I was listening to it. And I said, have you heard the new Adele song? Which he then replied, I haven't because it hasn't come out. And I said, no, it just dropped. They dropped it a day earlier than anticipated. I said, I didn't like it. I waited until you listened to it and you were like, I like it. I'm like, no, no. The music video is like eight minutes too long. The whole black and white vibe I'm done with. We don't, I, I don't think Adele knows what color is. I think BBC or Britain needs to realize that there is color TV out there now. No. I, I think Adele is, is now the sad singer. The first track, 19, then 21, now 30, I, whatever, however you want to call them. I am done with Adele. I am over Adele. Hello from the outside. You need to leave the outside. You need to get on a train to like nowhere. Just Adele, go back to your, I don't know, weight loss journey that you did and just stay away from music for at least 12 to 15 years because I'm done. (laughs) If you haven't noticed, this is going to be the top, this is going to be the section of the show where Michael and I disagree with the most because after we talk about Adele, we're going to talk about someone else who I passionately hate. So Adele, 30, what's your thoughts? 19 was the story of her first love. 21 was the story of her first, of the heartbreak of her first love. 25 was the story of self-love and rebirth in the form of a new marriage. And 30 is about her divorce. This woman has crafted, crafted entire journeys for us to go upon with her. I now feel I need to get a divorce because Adele had a divorce in order to properly enjoy this album. I will 100% say I like this first song. I don't think it's the strongest. I'm also very worried that it will not live up to how good 25 was. That is a big fear of mine that I'm going to listen to this and go, "Mm, it was good, but it wasn't 25. Because 25 was probably as close to perfect of an album as I could think of. If if someone had said, what's the most perfect album, I would probably start 25 and then go, go from there. I'm worried that this isn't going to be very good. I'm, I'm just worried. I love Adele. I think she's a brilliant songwriter. I think she's a brilliant storyteller. 
she might not be for everybody. And I'm very willing to admit to that. However, Adele, please do not stop making music. I love your music. I want you to break my heart. I wanna be sobbing on the floor from your music. So please make more. I can't wait for Adele 35 when she gets back with a younger boy, <laughs> then Adele 37 when she divorces that boy, then Adele 30, 41 when she decides that maybe she should just become a lesbian, then Adele 45 when she adopts a child from like Ethiopia, then Adele 52 when she decides that she's going to do a reunion tour with maybe Celine Dion because she'll still be alive at that time, and then maybe maybe just Adele like 62, like the grandma years, like her sitting in a retirement home singing about like the sponge cake and the like chicken tenders that weren't cooked enough. I'm done she with only, the journey that she's doing. I, I find her music very relatable and very much like, is we like, especially when you are those, like, cause then you think of yourself at those ages and like, the love that I had for this one person at 19 and how that album kind of connected really with me. And then at 21, how like that heartbreak connecting with that. And like, I just, I think of where I was at those ages and like, I, so I had a first love at 19 and a heartbreak at 21 and uh, got married at 25. And like, like I'm on Adele's track. I told my husband that he told me I can go fuck myself because I'm not divorcing him at 30 because Adele got a divorce at 30. Um, I told him that was rude and that I should be Adele, but <laughs> like, it's just like sitting there and thinking and like the way that she crafts the stories and how I can relate it to my life. I really enjoy that. Um, I think, I don't know. It's, it's for me. It's the music for me. I am. Um... I am. I am not an Adele fan. I think she had one good hit over her career. And that's all I can say. So you mentioned something about an eight minute song. And I feel that's a perfect segue from Adele to this next artist. And that next artist is Speaking of super long songs, speaking of Tim McGraw, <laughs> speaking of never getting back together, speaking of John just shake Mayer, it off. just shake it off, shake it off with John Mayer, shake it off with Tom Hiddleston, shake it off and just don't come back. Taylor Swift is releasing her Taylor's versions. Oh no, there's another one coming out too. <sighs> The Swifties are going to lose their minds. They're they're like releasing them like every week of each of her albums that she's already put out. Every week? I don't know if it's every week, but I know that there's one that came out like last week. That it was, was Red. Red came out. I know, but the there's album. enough. But there's a, there was another There's one. another one? Yeah. I think it's... They're literally, she's literally doing all of hers from the ones that are owned by Big Machine Records is being done all over again. Um, Fearless, Taylor's version came out in 2021. The Red came out, I think was the second one. Yeah, Red was the next one, which just came out. So she's doing them like month to month. Okay, maybe that's what it is. Okay. Oh, maybe. I have, here's a Pop Buzz article that would tell me all the albums in order that are going to be coming out. There you go. We, uh, but okay. So we don't need that. We don't need the re-recordings. I know, Taylor, you want money. I know, Taylor, you're screwed. You got screwed over by Big Machine Records. I get that. Is that Big Machine? Yeah. Big machine. Maker. It was more Scooter Braun screwed her over, which we don't fuck with Scooter Braun. Really? In this house. Yeah, he's an asshole. Does he have sway? He's like one of the top um, agents. He has Justin Bieber as a client. He has Demi Lovato. He has... He, um, had, he uh, has a lot Kesha, of, right? He no, that was Dr. Luke. Luke oh, okay. Kesha. 
he's not. He's kind of scum. So he, I I don't know the full story behind why she's re-releasing these and why she can't use them. But Michael does because he is our entertainment pundit. So I'm going to turn it over to Michael for two seconds and let us catch us up on why uh, Taylor Swift thinks it's appropriate to re-release albums in a different format. So when she ended up, she signed a contract that was super predatory when she was really young. And this happens a lot. Um, Younger artists, they are so excited to just be picked up by a music agency that they'll sign an article that, or they'll sign a contract that says um, you don't ev- for every album, you don't own your music until this specific thing happens. In Taylor's instance, it was, you don't own your album. You don't own your first album until you write your sixth album. And you don't own your second album until you write your seventh album. So the most recent albums she doesn't own. And so when she wanted to leave, the agency that she was at or the recording label that she was at to go to a new one, they basically told her, great, we own your five most recent albums and you are not allowed to sing any of those songs at any concert, the way that they're written. Um, So she doesn't own the rights. So what she said was, well, I would buy, can I buy my rights from you? I will pay whatever you want. And they said, well, maybe. And then she also was dropping her agent, Scooter, and Scooter swept in and said, well, fuck you, Taylor, and bought all her albums and bought all the rights from the recording label. So she got fucked by all these white men in the music industry. She then said, well, my fans are loyal. I'm just going to write my own. I'm going to re-release it because you can take the song and if you cover it and you make you change it. You, you have to change, I think it's like 20% of it, then you can re-release it and you can own the rights to the new version if enough of it has been changed. So she's done just that with these Taylor albums and all of the like Scooter Braun and all these recording labels said, oh, that's not gonna work. You're not gonna make money. Fans love the original. Why would you fuck with the original? Um, Cause Lauren Hill tried this cause she doesn't own any of the rights to her music. And she tried this and it bombed. But the thing that they didn't understand is this is Taylor Swift and her fans are massive. And if Taylor says, listen to this version, not this version, because these people screwed me over and they get money if you listen to those versions, they won't. They'll just say, fuck it, I'll listen to the new version. And so she's also doing things like she wanted to do a 10 minute song on the original version. And they told her "Mm, that's not going to sell. It's the number one song right now um, on Apple streaming. Like she's. Like she's basically taking all of these expectations and saying, go fuck yourself to the patriarchy. And so it's like, I can admire it from that standpoint. However, I am not a Swifty. I don't really care about her music. I I am applauding her for fucking over Scooter Braun because honestly, fuck him. He's now trying to sue uh, Big Machine Records for being misled that uh, because he's losing money and it's like oh hey good for you girl good good luck like so i'm okay with that i just i'm not a swifty i don't care and honestly now we're all supposed to hate jake gyllenhaal because taylor swift wrote a 10 minute song about him despite the fact they dated for three months like 10 years ago again again another another artist who sings about her breakups Good. It sells. It's relatable. It sells. Uh, country artists do it all the time. The number of male country artists I've heard singing about their breakups or their tractors. That's it. Or beer. Sorry. I know. I know. I couldn't agree more. But it's I just, an easy. It is an easy song to write because it's a. Everyone has had a relationship of something or had a longing crush of somebody, and so it's easy to write a song that's going to be popular. And I don't. I don't know. So for those who don't know, for those, I just looked this up because I wanted to see what a picture of Scooter Braun looks like. Scooter yeah. Braun is also the manager of Michael Nickel Pate and his husband's favorite artist. She, oh, I, I forgot <laughs> to mention her because remember, she's banned in my household. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So I am, I, I'm looking at a picture of him right now on Wikipedia. And all I can say is, wow, he has that look of someone who would try to fuck you over for a dollar bill. He sure does. We don't fuck with Scooter. So the other, I'm not sure if you have anything else to add about Taylor Swift. No. So she's releasing her new album. She released it this month. Go download it if you like Taylor Swift. If you don't, you're not missing much. The other one that I want to talk about briefly is my 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 Irish boys. I love me my accent boys, and that is Westlife. They are coming out with. I'm so happy. I did not know about this until today. They are coming out with a new album in December called Wild Dreams. I'm looking forward to it. I just heard the new track. The 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 titles track of this. It is fantastic. If you do not know who Westlife is. I will take you back to the year 2000 when a movie okay, Jonas that, Brothers. not 3000, 2000 oh, when a, sorry. when a movie that hit the theaters, like there was no tomorrow Pokemon 2000. I remember it. So because I was the oldest kid in the lineup at that time, and I still would be in no matter what, if there's another Pokemon movie to appear in the theaters, there's Pokemon, been two, Pokemon 2000, the, Opening short film about Pikachu's picnic with his friends had the soundtrack done by Westlife, Flying Without Wings, which went on to be Ruben Stuttered, Stutter, American Idol Season 2's winning song because Simon Cowell, the producer of Westlife, decided that it was going to be it. It screwed over Westlife from ever getting into the American markets because that was the song that they were going to come out with, but Ruben Stutter recorded it, and that's where we are. So Westlife is coming out with a new album. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. I'm, uh, I have not looked forward to this album in a very long time, and now I'm very excited about this new one. Huh. <laughs> there's, there's my rant for that. <laughs> hey, it's everyone's got to have a... a passion and a dream and a musical a niche musical um group that they like i love the delta right band and nobody knows who the fuck they are never heard of them either i will they're have fantastic look. they're oh, a lot okay. of fun they're very like indie folk oh, okay i might look them up afterwards but on this on the on the topic of music still one of the biggest entertainment news stories we we are leaving this to the end because it is not the end because there's still two more topics that we want to talk about travis scott for Mm. those who do not know he is a musical artist he is a i I would say rapper yeah he's a rapper he's a soundcloud well he was a sound i don't know if he was soundcloud or if he was just rapper and got found out the normal or the old way okay so there's a difference he is a rapper and he held a concert this this month in L in Las Vegas. Where? So Astro World is a music festival that goes on in I want to say it's Houston, Texas. Okay. Um, so you you tell the story because you know this a little bit more because I I, I only know that what what the result of it was. Um, so it is a music festival that I think it was the third or fourth year that it was supposed to be happening. Um, and like right from the jump, they went and they asked, you know, City of Houston, how many tickets can we sell? Houston said 50,000. And so they sold all 50,000. And then they put people into the parking lot that the music festival was going to take place. And then as the night went on, this, I don't know if it was the security or the police or the, I don't, nobody knows who's at fault. But as it went on, people were at like every single artist, like, trying to inch closer and we're jumping over these little fences to try and corral people till all of a sudden all 50,000 people are right on top of each other. I mean, and there's videos, there's really shocking and horrific videos of people like climbing up to like camera operators or technicians and saying like, there's a dead person right here. You need to stop the show. And then being like, fuck off. Like, and then people were trying to like get out and the, the, the security were like, cause there were like tall fences basically turned that into a death cage. Cause people were, if you put your arms up, they were all packed so tight that you couldn't lift your arm, put your arms down. And so people were passing out because 
if you hold your arms in that position for too long, you just, you suffocate. So people were suffocating and passing out. And I mean, it was horrific and everyone wants to blame the kids and everyone wants to blame Live Nation and everyone wants to blame Travis Scott. And I just think it was a combination of everything. Like it was just a poor planning event. And it was just, it was just the security did nothing. Like nobody did anything until it was too late. I agree that I I think there's a lot of people at fault here. I will say this, and I'm not sure if this is a a deep fake video or whatever, but Michael might be able to uh, address a little bit more. There is a video of an ambulance trying to get into the actual crowd because someone had passed out or someone had died. Yeah. The person on stage, I think it is Travis Scott at the time, yeah. looks at it, looks at the ambulance, says, hey, what's that? I'm, not, I'm paraphrasing here. Please do not think this is the word of the God here. But hey, what's that? He looked at it. He didn't tell his fans to disperse, to let the ambulance in. And then he went back to sing. So he has a history of causing, he's been arrested twice for inciting riots and violence. I think in the future, there's going to be a lot of conversations about concerts like this. Outdoor Well, he's, he's been canceled. Like he's, he's basically uninsurable right now. He's been dropped. He was in a couple of music festivals. They dropped him. Like it, it was a, it was going to happen. He, I mean, keeps getting arrested for inciting violence and riots at at concerts. And he's consistently problematic and it finally has led to people actually dying. I mean, he may come back in a few years, but there's also video of him and Kylie Jenner and Kendall Jenner out and about on the town after, like afterwards, like partying at like after parties. Like, and all there's all this like, so this this is gonna like take down some of the, the, the Jenner Kardashian clan, like, like this is just, it's just, and they're all like, oh no, we were so scared for our life and we tried to get them to stop. It's like, well, there's literal video of that not being the case. And there's literally video of you afterwards partying. Partying and having a good time. Like eight people didn't lay dead on the fucking nine, 10 people. 10 Ten. now. It is now 10 because some died in the hospital. We are always releasing new episodes and from time to time, new specials of the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Be sure to hit the subscribe button wherever you are getting your favorite podcast so you never miss an episode. But also, be sure to head over to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and give us a follow. We have behind the scene looks at upcoming guests, upcoming episodes, and some special social media only content. Subscribe to the show now. And now, let's get back to our episode. Uh, So we're back. I just want to let you know that we just had to cut away for a second because we were having some audio issues. Uh, I I apologize for that. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. But uh, if like, like the commercial said, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram because that's where we have some great social media stuff. And for those who like to look at selfies for most of the day, my Instagram is full of them. So follow me on Instagram and you get to see my selfie faces. Uh, It's more so selfies of your dogs. No, no, that's my personal one. <laughs> oh, never mind. Don't, no. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. That's, and I'm, I, I, I got myself into trouble because I've started to do them every Friday, every Saturday. And now I'm like, I need to stop. But how do I just randomly stop? Because I want to stop on a good number, but I don't want to stop too soon. Like, it's just really, like, it's weird. There's, so. It's a journey. So uh, we finished with Travis Scott. We are going to move into another big musical story that happened. And this is, um, she is no longer a slave for you. She is hit me baby one more time. She is, uh, I want it that way. I think that's NSYNC actually. (laughs) That is in, that's, I'm pretty sure that's back straight. Okay, there you go. Um, She is, um, oops, I did it again. 
Britney Spears is back in the headlines and she is a free woman after 14 years under a conservatorship under her father. How I need us to pop some champagne, something like my bitch is free. <laughs> and I just need everyone to remember she owes us not a damn thing. She owes us no music. She owes us no tour. She owes us nothing. Like I desperately want more Britney Spears tours, music, anything. But I also need to remember she has been captured and captive and stuck for so many years. She, if she never gives us another damn thing, you know what? It perfect. That's whatever she wants, she gets. So as much as I'm going to hope and pray that, that we get more, if we don't, I'm content because the bitch is free and she deserves it. Do you think she's going to? Do you think she's going to release some music? Because I think she probably, like, if if she goes the Adele route, she'll have some perfect, like, like conservative ship. <laughs> like, that's a perfect well, album title. She, okay. <laughs> I think, because she's brilliant. Like, that whole circus album that she did about what if you was going Amy. on in her life, If You See Kami, um, it was such... It, like she's a brilliant and she does all her own choreography and she does all her own. I think she's right now, like, I'm going to do nothing. I'm just going to enjoy my life. I think she's going to be bored. She's I genuinely get, think she's, she's going to get married. She, she does. She wants to get married. She wants to have another kid. Um, and now she can because conservatorships, they can legally put in contraception into you. And so she's had an IUD that she has been against having for years um, so she can finally have that removed. She can finally get legally married, which they told her she couldn't do. Um, I think she's gonna have the kid. It's gonna be, she might, and then maybe in like five, six, seven, eight years, she's gonna do like what Janet Jackson's doing now and do like a reemergence tour, either with a brand new album or like a, you know what? Britney wants to go out like and do a, this is my last tour or like a rebirth, like this is gonna be a rebirth tour and it's gonna be a new era of Britney and we might get like a this is a, all the old music I will not be doing this going forward because I'm going to start releasing the music I think she's going to give that to us because I think she likes genuinely likes performing it's just she's been doing it in a, a, um, a rate that she can't control she's not been allowed to control how she works and so I think she's going to take a break and she deserves it yeah and I think she's going to come back like the great my idol my god my goddess my my heiress to the uh, God Empire, Miss Cher. In the 90s, oh. she, she did not release a lot of albums because she was going through some personal issues herself with her son. Uh, and then in 2000, she released Believe and she made a massive comeback. Like there has been no other comebacks before. I can see Britney being the new Cher. Well, Cher and Britney, um, when... Brittany, Sherrod said uh, to Brittany, I want, or she, no, sorry, let, I'm, I love Brittany. I'm so tongue tied right now. Um, Brittany had said all she wants to do when she gets freed is go sit on a beach with Cher and like drink margaritas. And Cher responded, like, bitch, let's go the minute you're free. I'm paying. And so I need that to happen now. Like, I love Cher. I love Brittany. Like, this is what I need. Cher doing I'm a Slave for You would be the best album ever. <laughs> I think a Britney Spears Cher collaboration is just what the doctor ordered. This, that would be the, the epitome of all gay culture just colliding and everyone just like having convulsions for at least 12 years. It would be bigger I mean, news than ABBA coming back. Well, Cher did an ABBA, an ABBA cover album. So maybe yeah, we, she does a Britney Spears cover album. We don't talk about that, that, that train wreck of it. I didn't ABBA. hate that. I didn't hate the album, the I cover did. album. I did. Oh, well, you don't like Adele, so. <laughs> yeah, but I love Cher. Cher is amazing. That's, Cher is wonderful. So Cher she's is free. Kid. She's a free woman. We're happy. We're ha excited. She is moving on. She is going to do great things or say fuck it all and just enjoy her life. It's like that scene from The Wiz after Eveline dies where the, all of the um, slaves are dancing around going, can you feel a brand new day? <laughs> okay. It is. It's amazing.
So there are two last big topics that I want to talk about. Two. One, uh, yeah, no, actually, there's only one. There's only one, and I, I and I was going to talk about another one, but it was supposed to be in the movies, so I won't talk about it. So we'll talk about the biggest, the biggest gay news of the century, of the year. Every 50-year-old woman is having a massive heart attack right now. Every clueless fan is enjoying their life right now because the great Ant-Man has come from the behind and has become and named people's sexiest man alive. Mr. Paul Rudd was announced. This is what we're ending on. No, we're not ending on it. I was going to leave this part and then I was going to talk about something else for the last minute. Oh, okay, perfect. Never mind, continue. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Okay, I I guess we know where Michael falls on this story. Late night, late night host Stephen Colbert announced live on his show that he, uh, Mr. Paul Rudd had been named People's Sexiest Man of the Year for 2021. Um, I wasn't a fan. I, I don't think he's that sexy, to be honest. As a gay man, I was not a big fan of that. Uh, I think there was a lot of other people that should have been. And I think Hugh Grant has still not received his dues. And I think he needs to be named it one day. Maybe next year, maybe 2022, Hugh Grant becomes the sexiest man alive. So here's hoping. Or even like David Tennant or Michael Sheen I, or my husband, because if he listens to this, he better hear that name. So I, I, I am not a big Paul Rudd fan and I was not a big fan of this, but I know a lot of people are happy. I mean, I'm not going to lie with the way that 2020 was going. I half expected James Corden. <laughs> 2021, you mean? Same, same thing. Same thing. It's all the same. It's just all the same. 2019 James, still hasn't ended. James Corden, <laughs> sexiest man alive. That, that The day that happens is the day I give in. I'm just like done. No more podcasts, no nothing. <laughs> um, I mean, he doesn't age. That man has not aged since <laughs> Clueless. I love him in Clueless. I think he's a great actor. I mean, he's just not my type, not for me. I mean, I was literally like oohing and on over Nick Offerman. Like that's that's for me. Yeah, and I'm ooing and eyeing over Hugh Grant. So <laughs> shut you where my 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 interest in men go. And I, Prince William. No, God no. God no. You don't like William? Oh, you like Harry. We love Harry on this podcast. No, I hate Harry. <laughs> I am not a Prince William fan because I don't like bald people. <gasps> yeah, I went there. I went there. I went there. That's bullying. Yeah, well, it's been past the two first two commercials. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but we remember you bullied me before the first commercial. I didn't bully you. I, I gave you a spoiler. <laughs> That's bullying. Oh my God. I, I want to give. Oh. I'm just teasing you. I'm sorry. Now I'm going to get the comment. He was really mean to you this time. I'm holding my tongue this time, okay? <laughs> um, the last thing I want to talk about, and this is the... this I, I did not prep Michael for this. Ooh, we're going in raw. We're going... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You don't say that on a podcast with two gay guys, okay? <laughs> or you do, and it's just funny. <laughs> We are, as of recording this, three weeks, or actually as of releasing this, three, three weeks since the drop. <gasps> Animal Crossing. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for you to talk about it because I was like, how has he not talked about it? He has not even made a mention of this. We spent a good 10 minutes last podcast, last episode, Entertainment Rundown, talking about it. And this guy does not want to talk about it. So I have to ask. Animal I Crossing. Don't, I can't. I literally, I'm literally like right before coming on this was on Happy Home Paradise, making, <laughs> turning. I Okay, so I have Anka and Boris and they're both like, Egyptian themed and so I'm making them roommates so I'm building them their house and was halfway through and then I got the text are we ready to go and I'm like 
uh, uh, fuck. Yeah, so like it is literally charging, like ready to go for when we are officially done for me to hop right on and continue my little home building. It is everything I needed. It's like been all of this serotonin that I've been able to get. Um, Cause I don't know if people, I don't know if, if you listen and you do acting, you I'm sure are very aware that during tech week, all you want to do is go play in traffic, um, traffic because it's so miserable. Cause there's nothing pleasurable about tech week. The show is great. But being in tech week, it literally was like, I just want to quit every day. I don't want to do this anymore. I hate everything. Um, and then I could play Animal Crossing and get serotonin. And so that's what I did. And it was everything I needed. I needed that serotonin and it's still wonderful. My life has gotten considerably better since Animal Crossing has released this DLC. Are you happy with all the new expansions on Animal Crossing? I know you talked about the building and all that, but... Like, is there a point when you went, okay, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm glad that uh, they dropped this and I'm glad that they did it so close to the new year because there's a lot of people who are going to be doing Christmas vacations, Thanksgiving vacations, and they're not going to have much to do. So why not jump on Animal Crossing? So were you, was it everything that the hype build up to it? Was? It's been more, but from the way you're phrasing this question, I'm taking it you're kind of over it. I am my heart breaks. I know. I, I played for three days and I went, okay. I mean, it's still the same slow mechanics and that's something really to kind of be aware of. Like you're still waiting four days to get your first vegetable and you're still trying to get the cooking stuff. And I mean, it is slow paced. And I think what's, I looked at it when I went in like, okay, I can't sit there for 10 hours. Like when it first came out and play it straight because I'm at a point in the game where it's like I maybe need an hour or two and I also I know a lot of people went in speed run or did a speed run of the island designer thing to get all that stuff unlocked I still haven't unlocked most of it like I'm halfway through I think that storyline maybe two-thirds of the way through but I'm taking my time I'm doing two or three houses a day I also really like the decorating portion of Animal Crossing, so like going and getting to decorate houses is awesome. And I found if there's not any people on the island to decorate the houses of that I want to decorate, I just go, I don't need to do decorating today. I'll take a step back. I also am really enjoying as you play through it, you unlock like a hospital you get to decorate and a school you get to decorate and like a restaurant. And so I've been able to do that. I'm really enjoying it. And it's like learning all the little quirky like things that are involved. Um, like the new haircuts you can get. There's yeah. the the fortune teller. You can get the art more consistently with red. It's definitely slow, but it's enough new stuff where I'm like, oh, I want to jump on because I want to do things. And I think they thought cooking was going to be this major blowout thing that I'm like, okay, I, it's cool to have the food, but I'm not at that point yet in my playing where I'm like, I want to design, like change how my island looks. That may come down the line. Yeah. But, and, there, and there's so many cool items that have like, there's 9,000 plus items that have been added. Like, so it's cool seeing the tractor and I just got the tractor and I'm excited to put it somewhere. And so it's, it's everything I needed. I'm very saddened that it's not everything you needed. I, I think I'm just at the point. I might play it a lot more after my surgery and I've got things like I've literally got nothing yeah. to do, but this last month for me has not been heavily focused on uh, uh, Which Animal is Crossing. So I, 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 I might get into it in December, maybe for the first few weeks after my surgery when I'm literally sitting in my bed doing absolutely nothing. It, it could happen. Well, that's but... also when all the Christmas stuff happens and Christmas is more likely your favorite time of the year so amen to that brother amen to that so i i feel like you might enjoy it around that time more and again you may be kind of over it we also have exactly at midnight today or i guess tomorrow the new pokemon game drops yes which i'm not downloading i'm not getting i'm waiting for Acarius to show up in january so that is my new year's gift oh you're not going to get this one i was thinking about it but i was like okay Am I going to play it? Like, I've, I still have eight games up in my room that I think I put in my Switch once and I haven't played yep. them. So I'm just, it just might be because I'm just, Busy. I'm at a certain age now, as George Bailey would say. And I just, I'm at the point where you're I busy. Just, 
yeah exactly i've got important things on my mind and got to go from there but yeah we are almost at two hours as always as always um i want to thank everyone for tuning in hopefully you've gotten something and heard us rant and not bitch at each other for the first time and i think about 13 episodes of us doing this but it's been 84 years it's been 84 years um i want to thank you for tuning in michael as always thank you for doing this it's been a pleasure thank you and for having me yes um for everyone listening and for those who are tuning in as always we will be back uh tomorrow with another great episode of the cross-border interviews political round table we'll be talking about the biggest political news stories federally and provincially and here municipally in the city of calgary but also, uh, before I leave, I want to announce that the second, third week of December, or the last week of the shows of 2021, Michael will be coming back in. I think he's agreed to this, but we are not doing it tonight because we've literally sat here for almost three hours and we both have other things to do. But he is going to uh, come back on the show and we are going to recap 2021. The biggest, the biggest entertainment news stories of 2021. It is not going to be two hours. I can tell you that because we are going to breeze by them. And actually, that's untrue. I'm going to say it's not going to be an hour, two hours long, but it's going to end up being two hours because we always get off on tangents for some strange reason. You also want to do the full year. It's going to be like three hours. And like, <laughs> so just buckle up, just buckle up listen in like enjoy it go on a long car ride you know it's the holidays you're going to be driving places just get ready for work because i mean there's a lot of movies that's come out there's a lot of tv shows there's a lot of news stories and it's just sifting through it all um and we won't talk I mean, about every single one we'll talk no, about God, the highlights no. the top the top movies the, the bottom movies the ones that should have got picked up We'll talk about a few other things, but that will be in December. I'm looking forward to that. That will be our second last episode or third last episode of 2021 before we take a hiatus and we go into spring and then we will be back in January. But also, as I've mentioned in the last few episodes, I want everyone to tune in on January 2nd. January 2nd, we're making a big announcement. We're going to be doing a big things in 2021 i hope you uh tune in 2022. 2022 in season four of the show because we are going to be uh going bigger and i can imagine what you're thinking five days a week isn't big enough no it's not we are going bigger and we are going global so with that uh, i want to thank everyone for tuning in michael thank you so much for doing this once again have yourself an excellent wednesday keep talking everyone and we'll be back thursday morning with another great episode chat to you later